It's not very uncommon to see a Steinway grand piano. But what's the deal with Steinway uprights? Today we're looking at a more modern 1098 Steinway upright. Is it worth it? Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Moore. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you. Is, is it, it worth it? Is it worth it? I think that's the crux of the whole, the whole thing with every piano because the answer to that is based on whoever's playing it. It's all, yeah, it's all perception of as the player and you know, are you willing to put the time in to make this purchase worth it or this investment worth it. Um, the Steinway 1098 has a rich history. Steinway as a company has a very rich history as you know, this American manufacturer that laid out all these patents and became the best piano in the world and then you know, was sold off to investors and still creates an, a fantastic product some of the time and you see it on a lot of stages and you see it as the preferred piano for a lot of classical musicians. But is it worth it when you look at an upright piano? And you like to call these 45s. I call them 45s <laughs> because uh, it's, I believe it's based on a 45 inch scale upright model. And with the casters and the wheel, the, the footer, it comes up to about 46 and a half inches. I think, are they proud of that? Because most manufacturers measure in centimeters and they're how to show, hey, 45 yeah. inches. <laughs> English, yeah. Well, that, and then the other thing is this piano just reminds me in theory, okay? I don't know, I haven't really checked the specs, but you remember the GI pianos that Steinway dropped uh, from 1944 to 1945 all, all over Europe? So those were the green ones. Those were actually 44-inch pianos, I believe. Explain that. So they, they, because, hey, we're an American manufacturer, they make a great piano. In the 40s, during World War II, they decided, hey, for the troops type of thing? Yeah, it was for the troops, for morale, to combine the allies along with any of the uh, European Music is a universal forces. language. It was a universal language. And, and but, you know, Western and, and Eastern Europe, is a, it's, the Western culture is, is mostly all about the, the piano. So they parachuted down. They Paratroopers. Were, they dropped. Piano yeah, troopers. <laughs> pia piano <laughs> troopers. They pushed these things out the back of a, of a cargo plane, and they had uh, a parachute, and they would land, and wherever they dropped, they kind of stayed there because a lot of arm, or they'd pull them into a barn mm -hmm. or wherever they were They are probably they were about 45 out. inches, and, probably somewhere uh, between. Yeah, and so they were supposedly in tune and at least allow for some kind of, uh, you know, morale boost and to give the soldiers something to corral around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think after the war, they found out that a plain Jane upright piano with a keyboard attached was was a viable thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where the overall design of the blockish, bookish looking pianos, not just from Steinway, uh, not, not just this model, but also if you look at like the P22s and the Baldwin 243s, there's a lot of this straight up and down func functionality over over form. No for artistry of cabinets or anything. Right. It's kind of just straight to the point. Yeah, uh, and it, so it, it's kind of uh, unique. This is one of my favorite upright pianos. I, mm -hmm. I haven't encountered it as much as I often wished I would, at, certainly at venues and at gigs. But uh, the first couple of uh, uh, 1098s that I played were on a uh, military basis, and they were just fabulous instruments. 1960 is when the first 1098s were being made, and, and it's it's not a current model. If you go to, to Steinway's website, they do not have it. They only have the K52 or uh, on their website as like an available upright. But the 1098 is something that was as recent as I wouldn't say at least 10 years ago. There there was modern examples of the 1098. Right. Um, with the more recent ones, I think the retail price was 35 to about 40 thousand dollars for an upright, which you know. When, is it worth it in that situation? That's a, that's a hard price to, to swallow, especially for buying an upright piano. Um, whereas used ones, you know, I've, as of ten years ago, to you know, depending on more modern ones uh, that are that are used, you're seeing them from about seventy five hundred to about twelve thousand in, in that kind of range, um, depending on how old they are. This is a nineteen ninety nine that we have behind us. Well, see, that's the thing is that a lot of uh, Steinways worth mentioning, mm -hmm. and a lot of owners that have them. They won't own one that's brand new. You want to get one that's at least 15 to 18, 20 years old, like about the age of this one, because it's, 
settled in, it's aged, and it's going to have, that's when it that starts getting its specific, quote unquote, Steinway sound. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you mentioned, and I really like this with that tag light, is it worth it? Because almost any site that you go to, if it's a Steinway and Son site, official website or anything on the internet, you'll see this, and then you'll also see it in a lot of their dealers. You go there, I want to check out Steinway Piano. You have to go through pages and pages and pages of what? Grand pianos before they even show you an upright. So the first choice is from nine foot down to a five foot grand piano and every model in between. And then a lot of times there's some history in there and some historical pianos. And then they'll get around to showing you the, the uprights. The uprights are always listed lower down. Mm -hmm. It's first grand piano, grand piano. And I don't know if that's part of their marketing strategy. It might be. They're, I mean, whatever Steinway does the best, it's the marketing, mm -hmm. getting the word out. That part there is is the absolute best part of their company. Well, people who know nothing about pianos know Steinway as a name. It's, it's done a great it's job It's like of. some of the salesmen around here when people say, aren't Steinway the best? Yeah, they're the best known pianos. Well, are Rolex the best watch? What? Are, you know, all, are the Rolls, Rolls Royce. Royce the best car? You know, these questions where you can't really answer as like a definitive. There's, you know, there's interpretations of how good a product can be. And I'm sure certain Rolexes are, are great. And I'm sure certain Rolls Royces are great. But it, it's, uh, it's... But in the same conversation, you're not going to have just any mechanic go at it with a socket set on your Rolls Royce. And you're not going to let any jeweler bust into your Rolls Royce, your, you know, your Rolex, Rolex yeah. and go in there and monkey around with the, with, with the, uh, the mechanism. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to a piano that equates itself with the same type of ownership, or I don't want to say elitism, but the same type of premier type instrument, you need to have a premier technician. Yeah, and, and let's talk about it, because a 1098 gets, sometimes I wouldn't say a bad rap online about its, its techni the technicians, it's a, hard, it's a hard piano to tech. Well, there's, there's a slam book written by technicians, you know, that mm -hmm. slam book or, you know, bitch rap, whatever you want to yeah, call yeah. it. And, and most of it goes with this pressure bar right here. Which is abnormal on an upright. It, the, for as tight as this thing is, yes, as tight as they maintain it to, to maintain the pressure against the, the capo bar. Mm -hmm. Now over here, these are footed. So this is spaced off of the plate, but this one is... Right up against it. It's right up against it. It's right up against the felt and it pushes down on the string so that there's actually down bearing so that this becomes the speaking length of the string instead mm -hmm. of um, this plus that. Yeah, yeah, this plus that. And so it, it does make it kind of hard uh, on the technicians, but there's a couple of them that, there's a few technicians I've read reviews where they, they don't mind these pianos. In fact, one of them says, I actually own one. Mm -hmm. And he complained about tuning his. Yeah. And now I don't recommend this, and neither does Steinway or any other tech, but he went in and loosened his his pressure plate and then another guy took his off and then put it back on when he was done so i don't i think that kind of works around the whole purpose of what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be there for i mean you're supposed to tune the thing well and, and that's something steinway is very proud of their patents you know that it's something it, it kind of was the the foundation of the company when you look 100 years ago and uh and see what steinway was doing when they were still you know being the the I would say the the leaders in, in well, ingenuity behind a piano, which is you got to go you got to go far back in the book, but they, they claim 125 patents in a 1098 that that are all part of the Steinway history and Steinway accelerated action. Yeah, but, and but just remember too that those patents, that's something that each manufacturer sets out to get, mm -hmm. so that there isn't any encroachment from other manufacturers stealing their idea. And it's and and the, a lot of times I think uh, it's a marketing ploy. Or you think, uh, they just say that. But at the same time, when you realize that, you know, Mason and Hamlin has that, uh, the, what, what do they call that? Ac not the acupressure, but they have that, uh, that's the um, it, AccuJust hitch pins on Baldwin, which is one mm -hmm. of their, uh, they also have the adjustable uh, deal it's underneath the It's the resonator. It's yeah, the... That, that resonator. Mm -hmm. That has a strong effect on the piano. Yeah. You can, every piano that has those on there, you can tell, man, that's a patent worth its while. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to diminish part of the discovery process or the manufacturing process or the legal process of the patent office, but when they issue a patent, it has to specifically show exactly what it does. For the purpose of education. For the purpose of not just education, but maintaining some kind of legal integrity over 
who invented, who mm -hmm. designed, and who's entitled to do it. Yeah. So those are things to consider. They got a bunch of them in this piano, including the pin block, and then including their action, and even this pressure plate bar. Yeah, and so it all comes together. <coughs> it creates a very unique instrument. Um, and so let's take a listen to this 1098. Uh, it definitely has a kind of a very, I would say it's a, it's a charming sound. It is. Um, and so let's take a listen to it. We're both gonna play it and then we'll come back and, and talk about other examples of the 1098 and what else Steinway makes that is similar. Patrick, in the course of my education and going to school and playing at different venues and gigs, whenever I would encounter a, a 1098, my first thought was, ah, let's see if this time was any good. And then about 90 minutes or so later, you get up, yeah, I guess it's all right. And not really realizing how much time went by. They do kind of draw you in. There was something that is um, attractive in its tone mm -hmm. and the way that it plays. I don't know what it is. It just... It wins you over or it draws you in. It's one of those two things. Well, and I think uh, 
you've talked about this before, but you know the the American lumber, the American, and, and here we are. We're we're both here in Texas. We're here in the U.S. and it's hard not to like something that that like is ingrained in history, and especially I think when Steinway is presented in kind of this uh, modest way, you know, like usually you know usually we see Steinway, we think oh the Steinway D on the concert stage, and this right. like larger than life, and like oh yeah, it's a pretty good piano, but you know the concert is the good part, and the pianist is a good part. When you see something like this that's kind of packaged up, not excessively expensive, a new one does sound excessively expensive, but a used one like this that's moderately priced. Um, at least in the upright world, you know, it's it's not trying to outshine itself. It's it's kind of there to be enjoyed. It's, it's an upright piano. It's yeah. not going on a stage. It's not going to go impress anybody. Um, but it is. It's like a, a comforting sound. It's a it's a cool. It's. I mean, just playing and looking at a Steinway logo is in, is rewarding in itself because you're like, okay, this is you know, for better or worse, this just is like in the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> you, you go back. And so I wanted to talk about what the 1098 that that 45 inch design. You see it in the Sheridan collection, which I think was more of a uh, like a mid-century thing. You know, it's, it was kind of designed with a little bit more of aesthetic appeal than mm -hmm. just a blockish, bookish looking. So piano. the same insides, inner workings. The Sheridan collection had uh, you know curvature, walnut cases, things like that, um, but very kind of that mid-century modern. That's 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 sure. The fifth, almost uh, it's almost like uh, well. The beginning of Art Deco. Yeah, exactly. Because they just kind of rounded this piano off and they made it to where it's got a little bit of, um, some of them are not quite blondies, but they're mm -hmm. they're light brown or brown and they, they made it so it could match different kind of furniture. Yeah, it's and it's cool house. to see. We have like some old like uh, Steinway literature here that like has pictures of different examples of their uprights that they made when it was more popular to have that right. kind of style um, style element. Uh, but yeah, so the 1098, it's a it's a great instrument. Um, is is it worth it? Is kind of the question. I think if there's a purpose for it, and if you're someone who is going to enjoy it more because it's a Steinway, I think yes, it's worth it because its functionality serving its pur purpose right. as a piano. Um, I think Steinway is a pretty safe investment based on the name alone, um, and we've talked about that in some of our other videos. But it, I think it's just it's uh, it's going to be more expensive than something that's probably quality wise is very similar. Right. But it's going to retain a lot of that value because of what it is. Um, and so if you've owned a Steinway, a 1098 or other, um, the K52s are the new ones that are probably 40 plus thousand. I would guess more than that. You've talked about how there's, you know, there's Bosendorfer <coughs> uprights, there's Schimmels that are really nice, there's Beckstein, there's all these manufacturers that make these really excessive pianos that you know it's like how if you could if money was no object how how amazing an upright can you make and that's an interesting experiment it is um, and so if you've owned a really cool upright please leave your stories and um, if you've owned a steinway maybe it's an old one you inherited uh, please leave stories about your experience with that maybe you grew up playing one maybe your teacher had one and um, we love to hear about that we love to get other people's um, perspective on what it is like to own those um, and then make sure you're subscribed because we are going to be comparing the 1098 to a baby grand, the Model S, um, and we're excited about that because it's you know the, the profile of Steinway Grand versus Steinway Upright kind of in it, and it's these are their smallest forms, the 46 and a half, 1098, and the Model S, which I believe is a 53, 5253. Um, but make sure you're subscribed because we are going to bring that that video to you, and we're really excited about that. Thank you guys for watching.